Breakbeats and Rhymes. Stuck in the trees. I know at that time of 89, we had like the rooftop, right? Rooftop was cracking, we had the Union Square, um, Studio 54. We had uh, Union you had the Muse. Yeah. Um, Latin Quarters. Latin Quarters. <laughs> Mr. Magic and Red Alert on the air, right? Radio. Yeah, yeah. Mr. That Magic, time. Red Alert, Molly Mall. Yeah. Pete Rock was cutting. Mm hmm. Uh, wow. Um, so, certain artists at the time. Remember probably, P. Fine? Oh, yeah. 89.9. People don't talk about that too yeah, much. Yeah. DNA Hate Love show. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And and Special K and Teddy Ted. Yeah. Well, this is like just any normal day, you know what I'm saying, just rhyming, probably trying to write rhymes, listening to radio shows, um, trying to make tapes. I made one record, so just trying to record other songs, maybe hopefully I can get an, another opportunity to come out on wax. So that was the mind state I was in, and trying to just go around and just get known, try to do anything to keep my name buzzing, and not knowing down the line, certain radio stations would come about, like a Stretch Armstrong, and mm -hmm. people like that. Cold Crush, Treacherous 3, uh, Busy B, you know, The Furious 5. I look at that, that persona, that, uh, that respect that they, they obtained from their lyrical skills, and that's what I wanted. And I thought, you know, it was something you could do without, you know, being in the gang, without selling drugs, without, you know, but still get that popular effect. I remember being hanging with KG from the Cold Crush Brothers. I met him from going to B-Boy Records. So I met, like, Scott LaRock. I knew him before he got killed from going down there. So KG kind of took me under his wing. So he lived in Jackson Project. So he started taking me to places like Latin Quarters and places like that. So hanging out with him, that's how I met, like, people like Cool Keith because he lived around, like, Jackson Project, right. around that area. Her's wordplay is just, you know, mm. futuristic, like, you know, Battlestar Galactica, uh, you know. Uh, well, that's coming, right. Uh, it's much appreciated coming from you. And you definitely inspired a lot of cats. Even myself, you inspired me to do a lot of things as far as rhyming. Like, when, when battle, I learned a lot from that battle. It's like, oh, don't be so technical all the time. Do certain mm. things and pull back. Like, that inspired a song, like, putting heads to bed and... The, the kick and flavor with my man, my approach to rhyming, that always man, told And you know Purse was so nice, I had to put him on two songs on the, on the second album. <laughs> like, we had did Yes You May already, and it was like, yo, you wanna do another one? <laughs> you know, and I know his rhymes, like, that shit is part of my show. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Mike Tyson, I bash your face and for space and give me some space and I put your head out if you get out of place and rip you like plastic. Mm. Don't make me get drastic. Mm. Better step fast, quicker than get the ass kick. What <laughs> could you do to this? I'm I not new to this. this for you to diss. Me, me and Kamorf is ludicrous. I ain't, I ain't with that, that so get, get back, back and with that, that wick whack shit out, out my face where you get slapped like, like a hooker hook shut on my cash come on man this dude <laughs> oh, crazy right. Go this on dude is on. crazy I, and you know I can sit here and, and quote his rhymes because I'm a I'm a fan of that substance when you was hearing like Public Enemy and Kane and Rakim it's like you know, LL, like, one day I hope I'm that nice, you know? Nowadays, it's like, man, you listen to these dudes and be like, what was the thought process behind this? We knew you was high already. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, I don't I don't knock the new generation. I don't think they rhymes are, are, are technically put together like that. And, like, when I see these BT ciphers and, you know... I'm looking at some of the talent like, well, how did they make this cypher? You know, I know people that's way nicer than the cypher. Mm -hmm. And then they rhyming and the rhymes ain't even that hot. And they saying them like with conviction. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and you're like, that wasn't hot, you know. And then I'm hearing people taking it 20 and 30 times to get it right. 
Mm. How are you in the siphon? You gotta you get thirty takes? Mm. Yeah. So like, you know, time. after like three takes I said, yo, call somebody else and maybe next year. You know, because that's what they would have did to us. Yeah. But at the same time, too, I believe people had a different mind state. Even the fans was critical, more critical than they is now. Right. People were like, even if everybody didn't want to be an MC back then. Like, cats did dance. You had dances, I'm sure, like how I had dances back then. Yeah. Not everybody wanted to be an MC. So some people played their position. I can dance good. Let me be your dancer. You know, nowadays, I think dudes that's probably better at dancing would rather mm. be on the mics. And I think that's what happened to hip-hop, too. Everybody wanted to do it. And sometimes it's not done. It's not meant for everybody. A lot goes into rhyming. It's the persona you're going to project. It's the preparation. It's the lyrical delivery. How you're going to deliver it. I mean, it's a, it's a package. It's a performance. Even right now, I tell a lot of artists that's coming up in the game, once you're in a, in a spotlight like this, or let's say a situation like this, the mic is on, this is now a commercial. This is all that cool Fonzie shit you doing. Yo, son, you know what I mean? Yo, son, we gonna not cut that out because you just gonna look as ignorant as all them other dudes in the hood yeah. because now when that spotlight is on you, people want to know what your mind frame is like, what your mental is like. You know, is this dude really smart? Is he really intellectual? And then you hear half of these dudes and be like, oh, man. You know, they shouldn't even gave this dude a mic, you know. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is that we come from that environment that people would consider like hood, hood, but we never bragged and boasted about it through our careers. Right. It's more glorified now, which I don't like. What hip-hop is doing is glorifying more negativity. And a lot of the artists like Melly Mouse and all the past 80s artists never really glorified that, but they came from it. And that's what created hip-hop, I mean, but I don't like the direction. Hip-hop is like a reality show now. Mm -hmm. It's like anybody got a beef, anybody got a discrepancy, cut the cameras on, cut the cameras on. And once you cut the cameras on, it's performance time for a lot of people. Even if they ain't tough, they gonna act tough. You know, cameras on, I gotta keep this persona up, you know? And like like Per said, it wasn't about that back in the days. It was your lyrical capabilities was your persona and your credibility. When you look at rock and roll, when you look at like Paul McCartney, Billy Joel, the Eagles, you know, uh, Paul Simon, people will not let you forget these legends. If you don't know these legends and you enter in rock and roll, they would just cash you out. Same thing with R&B. If you don't know, you know, Barry White, James Brown, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Sam Cooke, Al Green. You trying to be a singer and you don't know these people? Cash you out. <laughs> Hip hop, different. Yo, Africa Bambada, Cool Hurt. Yo, son, them, them dudes ain't hot no more, son. Wow. It's our time now, son. Yep. They wasn't getting it like we getting it, son. It's like, but they, they the trailblazers. You know, how mm. can we just disrespect our, our heroes, you know, that, that blaze the trail? And I, and I say that with sincerity. I mean, mm. when... when you know, when I think of like Africa Bambada and Cool Herc and Red Alert and Jazzy J and all these people that really laid it down before it was money that came into play with it when it was just a culture. I mean, when you look at the game now, it's just one female so dominant like she's scaring all the rest of the chicks like it's just her and that's it but it's sad that for a woman in hip-hop i watched the documentary i forgot the name of the documentary but about women in hip-hop and it's so sad that really as a man we don't see what they feel it's like to them there's only room for one mc and there's so many of them existing they making music but the industry only allowing one in, and that's probably like right now. Break beats and rhyme. 
you gotta create a cult following and when I say a cult following look at an artist like MF Doom right look at um a mortal technique yeah cool look key. at uh cool key look at uh jedi mind tricks many right. past look at l bill mm -hmm. la cocra nostra right. you know these these acts i look at i, I told immortal just last week like and i'm i'm admiring what he's doing because he built the cult following no matter where this dude play at, it's Ram Pat. He ain't on the radio at all. You look at the roots, they ain't on the radio like that now at all. Or most deaf, or, or like you said, Talib. But let them dudes do a show somewhere. Ram Pat. So you gotta know what you're getting into it for. If you want the fame and all that exposure that goes with the fame, you might not get that. But if you know what you after and you set a goal and you know how you're gonna obtain it, you you gonna, you gonna win. You were down with Wild Pitch. Considering looking back, that label was was like a lot of the cats made classics. Even if it was a single or a whole album, everything I think that came out on there was like a classic album. Yeah, the gear wow. joint. Yeah, the Ultra Magnetic came out. The main there. source joint was on OC, there. The yeah. Gangstar joint was the on there. Yeah. Like the Chill beginning. Rob G. Yeah. 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 The Coop, right? Coop. Yeah. So it's like a label that right now, if there probably was around, just imagine like. See, what it, what it was is, well, with my situation, Guru was the one that forced Stu to sign me. And I ain't really care about Wild Pitch. I wasn't even looking at that, all that history and none of that. I was looking at, I had to get signed to a record label to enter the seminar. So that's why I got my deal. Because I wanted to go to the seminar. I want to make a record. If I beat all the top MCs, I'm that dude. And that was my, my mind frame. Can you touch a little bit on the evolution, a little bit more on the evolution of DITC, digging in the crates? I'm sure Lord Finesse is a big part of the creation of that. Percy P was also schooling me on like Diamond D is also a big part of that. Okay, the evolution started like this. It started with Diamond and Show. I say that because they were two popular DJs in the forest. Mm. They come out and they DJ in the park, you know. Diamond was more like a freelance DJ. Somebody jamming, he come through with his records, he get busy on the set. Show probably been DJing since he was like 13, 14 years old. So, um, Diamond was the first out the hood with the um, Ultimate Force, I'm Not Playing. And he produced a kid called Raheem. That was actually the first record I ever talked on. Raheem off the Jazzy J compilation, he did a song called I'm the King. I'm talking in the very beginning of the record. And um, I finally got a deal with Wild Pitch and I got Show and uh, Diamond to do tracks for me on that album. In the meantime, I bumped into A and brought A to the studio. Show was looking for a rapper, A was looking for a DJ. There you got Show and AG. During my off days and off times, I used to do mixtapes. And at that, I used to sell my mixtapes, sell my masters. And um, I met a dude by the name of Buck Wow. So when Mike Smooth wasn't DJing for me or he couldn't come to a show, I have Buck Wow DJing. So in the midst of me <clears throat> learning how to produce, and I finally started dabbling in production, Buck Wow caught the bug and learn certain things and you got Buck Wild a producer. Diamond had a chance to either do the Ultimate Force album or the Stunts, Blunts and Hip Hop album, his own album. We didn't even know Diamond rhymed. Mm -hmm. So that album wasn't only a classic, it was just like a surprise. It was a beautiful surprise because we like, Yo, how this dude get this nice? Is this really you? Mm -hmm. You know? 
Then you got the neighborhood hustler, which is Fat Joe. He always wanted to do it. And Diamond started doing his promos. And um, that's how he caught a deal with Relativity. Mm-hmm. Now you got me and Buck Wild. We on the Source Tour in like 92. I'm promoting Return of the Funky Man. During that Source Tour, you had like uh, uh, the A-Team, the Little Bastards. I know y'all looking like, who are these groups? <laughs> Roxanne Shante, Biz Markey, RSO with Benzino and them. Uh, Power Rule and a group called Organized Confusion mm-hmm. that had um, OC traveling with them. Mm. So during that tour, Buck and OC struck a friendship and they had a deal that when the tour was over, Buck was going to start working on OC joints. And there you got OC down. I did a track on there. Mm-hmm. And then I met Big L at autograph signing. So that that that's like the short form of the story. You know? Yeah, no doubt. D I T C mm-hmm. long live. I just think people need to do the research, like you was mm-hmm. explaining earlier. Finesse was saying, people just need to get into the roots of anything that you are part of. I don't care if it's singing. R&B, that's what I would want most. Do the roots, and if you like an artist, find out the people that inspired that artist. You know what I'm saying? Because every everybody will be old school one day, but at least find out and see what it was like and what they faced. For people like Grandmaster Flash and them, they didn't have YouTube, who we have now. They didn't have internet to, for exposure. You know what I'm saying? A lot, of, a lot of them didn't even have radio to go to for an interview. So they had to build their name and buzz off of, we're going to bring our own sound system. We used to go in the clubs with a sound system. They had their own shit. They bought their own equipment, had to go find copies of each record. There was no Nas record to rap instrumental to rap over. Back then, you had to know the original records, like in Peace the President, Bob James, Nautilus, Mardi Gras, you know, Billy Squire, Big B. You had to know these records. So that's that's how I rhyme. I started rhyming off of stuff like that, going to jams in the park, watching, making house tapes, pause tapes if I didn't even have a DJ catching somebody <laughs> rock, playing a beat real quick too a minute long yeah. pause taping that for like five minutes on a little tape record double cassette and then rhyming over that and recording myself rhyming over that That you know that's what I did I banging in the buildings you know what I'm saying in the hallway me and my brother they had to harmonize in the routines and all that stuff that was in, that was inspired to, to, for me to do, for listening to people like you know, Cold Crush and Force Some Seas and Fantastic Furious Five, you know. So that was inspirational. But I'm just saying, like, far as like, what I want everybody to do is basically just learn about the artists, learn about, like he said, like Law Finesse. If you read about him, you'll learn who came and who stemmed from an artist like Law Finesse. How did certain artists like Fat Joe and Big Pun, but it all started from somewhere. It's the same thing with rhyming. Certain styles stemmed from off of certain kind of MCs, and this some artists don't get the respect. Some people might say, yo, Percy P, I remember I've tapped into certain things that maybe other artists have gotten more notoriety for doing, but that's the job of the audience as a, as a hip-hop consumer, as a fan. Wow. Do that. That's what I did as an MC. I still want to know about the other MCs of the day and before me, you know what I'm saying? And try to learn and do the research and, and try to spread that information to more people for more notoriety and more awareness. You know, the radio shows like your show, you know what I'm saying? Your show, and back then I was telling people to check out Hank Love's show. Mm. Awesome too. Trying to put people yeah. up on, you know about Awesome too that come on after Hank Love? Well, you don't know about that? Keep the station there. Um, you know, P5, 89.9, you don't know about that? It's stretching by B-Dos, and you know, and that's yeah. how you help hip hop, really, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just spread the no. word. I definitely appreciate Percy P letting Lord Finesse and other cats know, you know, come through this studio, do this interview and whatnot. So it goes a long way when respected artists such as yourselves shout out a radio show or an outlet for that music. But I just want to say one thing real quick. For that. Yeah. The reason why I would bring like a Lord Finesse here because I also know this is his story mm-hmm. and every day is history. But when something can happen that can impact the future, this battle was like 24 years ago. Next year, it'll be 25 years, a quarter of a century. That's older than a lot of people coming to clubs right now. 
but mm-hmm. that happened and I know that battle need more notoriety it's out there on yeah. YouTube but it would have happened if me and Law Finesse just came together that's what we gonna do for hip hop sake not just for ourselves but for hip hop sake something that people can look look on years later and learn from and wow and that's what that's what I consider us coming together to do and that's right now what are Percy P and Lord Finesse currently working on you know what are some of the things y'all are got in the works for the people well I could tell you for myself I was I was very happy to know that you're coming back you told me you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's to me that that's that's cool I like to know that you know what I'm saying artists the oldest school artists like myself I'm still here in the game still on the field you know certain few heads like cool keep and that never left but to know that you, you definitely made it inspire a lot of cats and, and a lot of inspiration came from you. You know what I'm saying? The stepping back, you do production, but to come right. back on the mic was like, wow, that's cool. That's what's up. And I also know your contribution to hip hop, so I know you coming back in the game oh, yeah. will probably inspire and bring in forth other MCs. You know what I'm saying? But as um, far as myself, projects I'm working on, I mean, I'm working on projects I even talked about it with you you even gave me a title I ain't gonna let it out the bag yeah don't let that title yeah that. that's <laughs> dope title yo and that's, I'm just that's dope <laughs> yeah because I think with that title you could put so many elements from that title in that album yeah you know so that's something I definitely you go back to the E. Kim days with that yeah, one yeah, yeah you can yeah so um, we keep that in the back but um, I haven't built with Diamond about the project you know what I'm saying so we mm. built on that but as far as like Titles, I'm gonna let out a title. I call it Serious P, like Serious mm-hmm. B, the stars, you know, the Dogon tribe. I call my next project Serious P, and I call my supporters the Dogon, the Flogon tribe. Mm-hmm. For those, only those that know, know. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I represent in hip hop. Those that was there know Percy P. If you don't know, that means you probably wasn't really mm-hmm. into the culture yourself to really know. So mm-hmm. that's. That's my best definition for myself, even my first album, Perseverance. I mean, that to me was the best title I figure I can give myself and my album. You know what I'm saying? Perseverance, because like, I'm just staying in the game. And I wasn't rhyming really to get a record there. I was rhyming for the love of hip hop, never knowing I would make records. But now that I am, I'm not going to stop because of a record deal. So I'm going to stop when I decide to close the curtains, really, more so. But um, I'm definitely inspired by other artists like yourself and you know and just for people to appreciate what I bring to hip hop that's definitely would keep me around check it out check it out coming at you live and direct it's the underboss aka the law finesse you're tuned in to break beats and rhymes you already know DITC